Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amobi Kugo, back again with my guy, L. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting the unfiltered thoughts and opinions. This week, we're joined by young phenom FC Cincinnati defender, Zico Bailey. Uh, we're going to be getting to know all about Zion, talking about his career, and learning more about his off-pitch endeavors. Uh, I'm personally excited about this episode. Uh, Zico is someone that I've known about uh, through some of the homies, uh, but for him to get on the platform, uh, how you feeling today? Good, man. Appreciate y'all having me on. Yeah, I appreciate you coming through. So uh, first things first, L. Let's let's get it. <laughs> we got we got some work to do. <laughs> All right. So one thing we like to do to kick off the show is play a game of two truths and a cap. So um, our guest Zico will give us three facts about himself. Two will be true. One will be a lie. And Amobi and I have to guess what the lie is. So. Moby is up with you 2-0 so far. Yeah. So you're in the lead this year. Um, so I need to get on the board. So whenever you're ready, Zico. All right, for sure. Um, my first one is I play for my middle school basketball team. Second one is I'm fluent in Tagalog, which is the native language of the Philippines. And the third one is my dad and I have the same last name. Not last name, middle name. Sorry. Oh, dang. He switched it up with that last second. Yeah, same middle name. My fault. Okay. Zico Bailey. Yeah, I didn't know. I know you you Filipino, but I don't know if you're fluent because, you know, growing up in America, but you never know, so. Yeah, uh... I'm going basketball middle school. That's the cap. That's the cap for me. That's What's the cap. You, L? you got to uh, wait until L answers. I'm going to say Tagalog is the cap. All right. Those are the final answers? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The lie is the one about Tagalog. I, I don't Damn. speak fluent Tagalog. <laughs> oh, yes, oh like, no one just doesn't yo, say that because I know. Yo, I, I got too many Filipino homies that don't speak Tagalog fluently, so I had, <laughs> that had to be the, the yeah. cat for sure. Respect. Okay, yeah. but uh, I had no idea you were Filipino, so that's, uh, that's a good little fun fact. Uh, so, you know, you grew up in L.A., you know, you got some Filipino roots. When did you fall in love with soccer? Um, ever since I can remember, to be honest. It's, uh, my brother got me into it, Kanoa, my oldest brother. And my dad was a big soccer fan, obviously, because he named me after uh, Zico, the Brazilian legend. So mm-hmm. I think it was almost like I was born to play soccer, to be honest. So yeah. And so, like, what's your origin story? You know, you grew up. You know, your dad loved the game. Your older brother played. Um, like, describe that experience of like joining your first club team and then kind of building up to where you are now. You know, playing professional. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think I started playing, like, recreationally when I was around, like, four, five years old. And, yeah, like I said before, my brother Kanoa, he got me into playing soccer because anything he did, I wanted to do it too. So if he was outside uh, skateboarding, I wanted to skateboard. If he was eating an apple, I wanted to eat an apple, stuff like that. <laughs> so I just always wanted to be like him. So, uh, yeah, when I was, like, four or five, joining, like, a little AYSO team, uh, me and my dad and Kano, we would always uh, go to the park, just kick the soccer ball around. Those are like my earliest memories of soccer. And mm-hmm. during that time, that was actually when I lived in Arizona. So I was born in Las Vegas, but I lived in Arizona until I was like six. And then when I was six, then I mo- we moved back to Las Vegas. And then that's when it got uh, more serious for soccer, just because it was a bigger town of Las Vegas, more opportunities. So I joined my first club team out there. I must have been like nine or 10. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a small team, like just called Premier, Premier, Premier SC, I believe. And yeah, just playing at the time, just for fun. Like I said, I want to be like my brother. So just playing soccer. Um, and yeah, really, when I joined, I joined another club team called Heat FC. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were like one of the bigger teams in Las Vegas and that's when things kind of got 
more serious, I would say, because my dad, uh, he was pushing me more to like play with the older kids and really try to take it seriously. But if I bring it back to the uh, two truths of the lie, uh, I actually used to play basketball when I was like sixth grade, fifth grade. And that was because I transferred to a new school and I didn't have no friends. So I was like, all right, let me try for the basketball team. Hopefully I could just be friends with them. So there was like a small little like time in my life where I wanted to be a basketball player. I, I didn't want, I wanted to be like LeBron James. I looked up to LeBron James. I looked up to like Allen Iverson when back in the day, obviously I was too young, but watching videos like on YouTube. So I wanted to be a basketball player, but uh, Kano was like, nah, you, you need to be a soccer player. He like kind of told me like, you're going to be too short, right? You can't play basketball. <laughs> Yeah, because our mom so, is, like, five feet tall, dad, like, five eight. so, so yeah. All right, so talk about that. Like, you know, you talk about, you know, switching to basketball to build friendships and stuff like that. Growing up playing soccer, you know, in Arizona and then obviously in Nevada, uh, were you, like, one of the few minorities? You know, how, how was that dynamic for you? Um, in Las Vegas, it's a lot, like, Hispanic kids. It's not too many – too many, I wouldn't say too many like black kids, it's more like Hispanic kids on the teams that I was on. Um, so yeah, it, I wasn't really the minority to be honest. Okay. So, yeah. And then with that, with that being said, talk about the, uh, some of your soccer influences growing up. You know, you you were named after the great Zico. Um, yeah. You know, you really used your brother and your dad as role models. But who are some other people like? You know, you say you watched Allen Iverson and stuff on YouTube. Who was that for you, soccer wise? Yeah, soccer-wise, uh, when I was real young, it was Ronaldinho. I can remember mm -hmm. when I was, yeah, like in elementary school, as soon as I would get home, I'd run straight to, to the computer and just put on Ronaldinho highlights. Like, I can remember mm -hmm. that so vividly. So that's when I was real young, was Ronaldinho. And then as I got older, it was Neymar. Like, I wanted the hair like Neymar. I wanted to walk like Neymar. I wanted to play like Neymar. So... <laughs> That was really my influence uh, growing up when I was like 12, 13, 14. So, yeah. Okay, respect. So what was that experience like for you, you know, making that jump to like the LA Galaxy Academy? You know, because you mentioned playing for like kind of some, I don't want to say small teams, but like uh, teams in Vegas where you weren't getting as much exposure to the game. Yeah. Yeah, so how I got started with Galaxy was – my dad had known uh, the coach at the time. It was Greg Vaney, and I think mm -hmm. he coached Kainoa at RSL. I think that's how they had that had the connection. So when I was like eleven, I would go out to LA. I would train for like five days at a time, just to like I don't know. My dad just wanted me to get exposed to that type of level. And then when I was twelve, I had got up, got called up to a national team camp, and it was in LA. So they had their scouts there. This is like U14 national team. And yeah, I had the camp. I did well. And as soon as the camp was done, my dad just told me that uh, some of the coaches from Galaxy were there watching and they wanted me to join the academy. And I didn't even think twice about it. I was just like, okay, like my dad telling me to do it. So I'm going to do it. And uh, it was LA Galaxy. So it's a big club. And every time I would go train, like I would just be amazed by the players because they were so good. I never understood that. Like, when I was younger, why the kids in California were so much better than the kids uh, in Vegas, at least. So, yeah, that's really how I got started uh, with the Galaxy. Um, and as far as the level, I would say the level when you were younger, like I said before, I just don't know how they were just – the level was just higher. I don't know. I guess it's because mm -hmm. more selection of kids, I guess, in California, bigger city, more exposure. So – yeah, the level was definitely like a big jump at first when I first joined the academy. What was like a day to what was like the day to day like? Like, so you go to school and then you practice in the mornings, practice at night. Like, what was that experience like? Because you know we got some kids that listen to this this show and they're always figuring out. All right, we want to learn from the pros how they made it to where they are. So, what is that experience like as a young uh, academy kid for such a storied uh, club team? Yeah, so the first two years of Galaxy, they didn't have the, the schooling program yet. So it was, I went to regular high school in the afternoon, have training, stuff like that. But the third year when I was in the academy, they made like their residency kind of program. So every, every kid was taken out of their regular high school. They was put into online school. 
uh, we would train in the mornings. So at the same time as the first team and the second team. Uh, and then after that, we would have lunch. And then we would do our schooling online. It was actually in the stadium. We'd do it in the stadium. Mm -hmm. So that was like a day-to-day -day thing. It was just almost like a taste of how it would be as a professional. Like you train in the morning, you eat lunch, and then you go about your business. And for us, our business was school, obviously. So that was really like a day-to-day -day thing. And then once you go home, just chill, relax. You got to do homework, obviously. So yeah, then just get ready for the next training the next day. So. No, that's what it's all about. You know, it's important to share that insight because people think it's just you're good and then you go pro, but that's not the case. So talk about, you know, all right, you graduate from the LA Galaxy Academy, you, you know, you go to college and then you make the jump to Europe. Uh, what was the decision process behind that and kind of how did it come about? Yeah, uh, my dad just, since I was young, been conditioning me that Europe is always the end goal. You know, that's where the highest level is. That's where most money is so yeah when i reached that level <laughs> at one point and obviously the champions league everyone watches the champions league it's like you want to play in those type of games so you, you uh, talking about Concacaf champions league or regular champions league <laughs> nah <laughs> the european point. champions league <laughs> but the Concacaf champions league, i want to play in that too for sure but, most definitely, most definitely. yeah so yeah, so I didn't get a contract uh, with the second team or first team of Galaxy, so I kind of knew my, my route had to be through college or through trials, like like what I did in Europe. So, yeah, I went to college um, one semester at Cal State Fullerton, and then I just told my dad I, I wanted a new, cha like a new challenge to just test myself, you know, and to see what it's like to go overseas and try to become a pro because... I feel like with college, I can always go back to college. You know what I mean? Like I could be mm -hmm. 40 and still get my education, but I can't be 40 and, you know, try to chase my dream of being a professional. So that was really my, my mindset behind it was just take a chance and, yeah, just see where it goes, to be honest. Perfect. And, and where did it go for you? You know, talk about that experience because I think it's great insight for you to share um, you know, as a you know young phenom, you go to the academy. You know, one of the biggest clubs in the United States. Then you go to Cal State Fullerton, uh, and then after, you know, freshman year, you go. You decide to take a chance on yourself and bet on yourself and go pro, uh, and not just pro. You went overseas to Europe, the highest, you know, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of a long story. So after the fall season, around like January time, I went to Germany. The first club I went to was Saint Pauli. I was like the second division uh, of Germany. I was there for about, I want to say, three weeks. I was with the under-19 team. And at that time, I was playing as a winger. So I was with them. I was doing well. But as you learn uh, in soccer, as it gets to the higher levels, it's more about business. And even just things aligning. Things got to, thing, like the stars got to align. Let me say it like that in order for stuff to happen, especially as an international player in a foreign country. So I know Romy talked about it too, but if you go on trial and you're the same level as the, as the kids there, why do they need to take you? Kind of stuff like that. So yeah, I was at St. Pauli. I, I did well, I scored a goal. Yeah, I scored a goal in one of the uh, matches that I played, but I was the same level as a kid, so there was no reason for them to take me. So after that, I went to a third division a Swedish team named Geis. I was only there for two training sessions. And yeah, right out the gate, they was like, yeah, you're too small. You won't be able to play at this level. So yeah, did that like two day trial. And then I went to a second division a Danish team called HB Code. And I think they had some like American ownership at the time. So yeah, I was there for, I want to say, like another three weeks. And that was with their first team. Um, and yeah, just same thing there. It didn't align. I was I was the same level as the guys there, so they had no reason to take me. So, yeah, and then after that trial, I actually stayed for almost like a month with Romy in Malmo in Sweden at the time. So he kind of helped me just situate myself and he was someone I could be around that would 
give me advice, and he let me stay with him until I found my next opportunity. So I'll forever be grateful for Romy on that. And yeah, like I said, after a month of living with Romy, just training on my own at this time, I wasn't even with a team. Training on my own, uh, my agent got me a trial with a first division uh, Swedish team, Kalmar FF, but it would be with the under 19s. So yeah, I went there, um, went on trial for like a week and a half, and then they decided to take me because I guess, yeah, I was a, my level was a bit better than some of the kids there. It wasn't like I was at the same level. Um, so yeah, that's really like the best way I could describe it. It was a real like wild time in my life, just going, bouncing from like Denmark to Sweden, back to Sweden, staying with Romy. Uh, I had one suitcase at the time because I thought I was only going to be in Germany for like two weeks, but I ended up staying in Europe for like three mm-hmm. months at that time. So it was a real like crazy time in my life. No, uh, that's real, bro. Like talk about like what it takes mentally to like hold true. Like you go to Germany, it doesn't work out. Unfortunately, you go to Sweden, it doesn't work out. Unfortunately, you go to Denmark and then you're staying a month training on your own in Europe when you could be back in L.A. or you could be back in Vegas. Um, talk about the mental fortitude that you had to have to like pursue that dream. Yeah, for sure. It was tough. Like to be honest, because at that time it's January, January, February. So it's cold, mind you that. And like I said, I'm I'm from Las Vegas. I'm from LA. I'm from the West coast. I'm used to warm weather. So (laughs) yeah, that mental side of the game, that's like, I feel like that time in my life, it really set me up for for, yeah, my, my career right now and for what's coming in the future because, you know, that was the first time in my in my soccer career, honestly, that people were telling me, like, no, you're not good enough and, no, we don't want you on the team, stuff like that because I was very fortunate. Like, with Galaxy, I played almost every game. I was a starter. Uh, I was involved in the youth national team. So you get a lot of... I don't even know what you say. Kind of a lot of hype around your name. You even hype yourself up a little bit too. Um, so yeah, even during that time, I wanted to like just go back home. I was like, man, I ain't trying to do this pro thing, man. It's too hard. But then you just fall back on like your parents, your friends. Uh, Romy was someone I could lean on, my brother, both my brothers. So yeah, mental toughness is for sure something you need if you want to be a professional. Uh, what what advice would you have for that young professional that goes to Europe? You know, what would you tell them to do? Like, are you about to go on trial? Or are you just like, you know, you're trying to get it out the mud out there. What yeah. what advice would you have for them? I would say be prepared uh, to hear no. That's one thing I would say. And yeah, I would say just just have fun with it. Like, it's gonna be a journey. It's gonna be ups and downs. Like, not everything is going up it's going to be up and down and you just got to do your best and like Romy said uh when you go on trial like you need to show that you're a higher level than the other players because if you're the same level then it's like wh- why do they need to take you because even in the U.S. if an international mm-hmm. player comes in that's more investment that they have and there's limited international spots so yeah I would say any kid that's trying to go pro in Europe or even in the U.S. like you just got to be ready to hear no, and you got to have fun with it. Like, know the journey is going to be up and down. And just work your hardest, to be honest. Like, it's real simple. No, that's facts. And you got to be a difference maker. You got to, like, what is going to make you get, like, noticed, you know? Because, like you said, if you guys, if everyone's on the same playing field, they're going to make sure they get the cheaper option or the one that, you know, is most acclimated to the situation. Um, yeah, exactly. Obviously, you know, you finally get your break in Europe. Um, but you make your way back, you know, stateside. So talk about that process coming back home, you know, obviously, you know, playing for FC Cincinnati. Yeah, so actually I, I left out one detail. So after I was with the, the Swedish under-19 team, I had to leave uh, just because I was too old to play in the academy at the time. So I went on trial with the third division Danish team, and they had just gotten American ownership. Uh, the name of the team is FC Helsinger. They still have American ownership now. I believe yeah. they're on the second division. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, shout out Jordan. Yeah, so I went over there and they had a big tryout with all these kids from North America, mainly like the US and Canada. Uh, and their whole business mm-hmm. model was just to get young North American kids, play them in the lower division um, in Denmark, and then hopefully sell them to the first division of Denmark or somewhere else in Europe. So yeah, I went on trial there. I got a contract. Um, yeah, fast forward like three months, I uh, couldn't get my work visa. So I was just training the whole time, no league games or nothing. And then after the three months, they were like, oh, we need to go in a different direction. Just out of nowhere, just said we need to go in a different direction. So I got cut from that team. And then I had to come back um, to the U.S. because my visa has expired already. Like I had the police sending me papers like, yo, you need to get out of the country. Like, your visa has been expired for like a couple months now, all this stuff. So came back. I went to... Las Vegas, uh, back to where my parents live. And I was training with the USL team, the Las Vegas Lights. Just training with them, trying to stay sharp. And then an opportunity came uh, with FC Cincinnati. When their season was already over, it was like the postseason training. And yeah, I came out here for like a week. Well, originally it was supposed to be only three days. And then I impressed in the first uh, three days. And then they invited me for another week. And then... Yeah, that was, re- that was really, it happened pretty fast, to be honest. I didn't really expect, like, anything to come out of it because in my mind, I'm like, okay, I can't even make third division uh, Denmark. How am I going to make first division in the U.S.? So, but, yeah, I just played, played how I usually play, try to have fun with it, and they ended up uh, acquiring my homegrown rights from Galaxy. So I, I think that helped a lot with their decision just because it was like uh, – low risk, high reward type thing. So yeah, that's really Mm -hmm. how I got started with FC Cincinnati, just postseason trial. Uh, I I really like how you said the fact that uh, obviously from a mindset perspective, it's tough, you know, all right, if I'm not making third division in Denmark, how am I gonna make first division in MLS? But that just goes to show you that there's a team and a coach that would recognize your talent no matter where you go. It's just you know, having the opportunity to go there. And uh, a lot of players will get discouraged because of situations like how you went through. Like, it would be easy to quit and go back home and just, you know, figure it out. But the fact that you stayed true, you know, those stories that we hear, like the Jamie Vardy's, you know, those type of stories, the Chris Wondolowski, and like your case, you're not even 22 before you're doing all this stuff. So, So for that to actually happen and like find your feet in Cincinnati is just amazing. So, You know, talk about, you know, what's been going on because, you know, there's been a lot of changes since you've been at Cincinnati. What's going on with the season, the outlook? How's everything going from that standpoint? Yeah, for sure. Uh, With the changes, I mean, there's already been like four coaches since I've been here. So, so yeah, I mean, it's been crazy. The first two years were like up and down, up and down. And obviously we we weren't performing uh, how we want to as a team obviously, but with the new leadership and the new coaching staff that we have this year, I feel like they have um, MLS experience, so they know how the league is. Like, the league is so unique compared to, for example, in Europe. Like, people say all the time in Europe, if someone's not doing not doing the job, they can just replace them straight away immediately. Like, that's usually how it goes. But in the U.S., you got the salary mm-hmm. cap, you got international slots, you got TAM, GAM, all this stuff. So... I think now with the new leadership, yeah, like with the new leadership, uh, they'll just know how to navigate the league. And so far, uh, with the way the season is going now, I feel pretty confident that we'll be better than the first three years that we were in the league. So, And then for me personally, just trying to break into the squad, uh, yeah, become a starter, get more minutes, contribute to the team any way I can. That's really how my mindset is right now. No, that's what it's all about. And, you know, we got some friends of the family at, you know, FC Cincinnati. Uh, But one thing that we did see recently, uh, you was um, part of some jokes with Dom about how you stealing the training table. So how did that come about? And, like, what's the emphasis on, like, you know, making sure you're taking care of your body? 
Yeah, like I said uh, on IG, I'm just trying to be, I was trying to be like him. You know, I see him every day. He's always one of the first <laughs> ones in. And I'm pretty sure he's the last one out every day. Just him taking care of his body, getting like massage, him in the gym or him in the cold tub. So, yeah, but the guys always give like shit to the younger guys when they're on the table because they're like, ah, you ain't got no muscles to even be massaging or something like that. So, <laughs> so yeah, they make, they make. All right, real quick. Do they ever it. kick? Do they ever kick you off the table? Do they ever kick no. you off the table? Like, no, if no. they like, no, I tell them because this is okay, my third so you year. Stand up for yourself. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I tell them. I, you gotta understand. My third year. It's not like I'm a rookie. Like when I was a rookie, they would kick me off the table. Like they'd be like, "Nah, you're a rookie. You gotta get off." You. Only, I was like 19 at the time, so I was like, "Nah, you gotta get off." But I'm, like, I'm almost 22. That's the time. I'm almost 22. Mm-hmm. In my third year. Like you can't be treating me like I'm a rookie. So that's what I said. So you saying if, if if Ray or Dom or like Jeff Cameron was like, hey my guy, you gotta you gotta step, you are not gonna step? No, I'll this step. This is live too, I'll, so they gonna they gonna listen to this. No, I I step, <laughs> but you know they good they good guys. They they know, and I try to explain myself like. Yeah, they like, good. They not they not gonna do that. Yeah, Dom, Dom and Ray not gonna do me like that. Jeff sometimes Jeff because you know Jeff was in England and they be different over there. So when he told me to get out, I'm like, alright, yeah. but he hasn't he hasn't told me to get out so far. Okay, I feel it. That's good. Like, talk about that dynamic within the locker room, like, because a lot of people don't see it, you know. So, like, that inside, you know, those the stories where you and Dom are bantering around, you know, that's what people love to see. So, talk about that dynamic of, like, building a good locker room because, obviously, you know, the first couple years didn't go so well. But I feel like, you know, as a team, you guys still had that camaraderie. And then now with, you know, Chris Albright and Pat Noonan in charge, uh, you know, things are starting to change. It's still early, but things are, you can see the change. Talk about that dynamic. Yeah, for sure. Like, like you said, Dom and Ray and just other guys that have been around the game and been around MLS specifically. I just try to pick their brains every time we're in the locker room or we're eating lunch and they're good guys, like to begin with, not even like soccer players. So we always joke around and yeah. That's, that's really the main thing is just I just try to pick their brains and just learn from them every single day because I know for me, at least, I don't want to pass up the opportunity of having someone that's next to me that has more knowledge than me and I'm not taking advantage of it. So that's something I really mm-hmm. try to do every single day. Like I said, Dom is always taking care of his body. Uh, Ray is always taking care of their body. So that's something I want to like implement into my career so I can play as long as they have at a high level. So, and as far as the banter, I mean, they just, they just funny guys in general. You know, it's like the brothers is always going to have jokes. So, yeah, they're good dudes. Most definitely. And then you, know, you have played in Europe. You have played in MLS. Talk about the difference and if you would say or what you think about is MLS catching up to Europe from your eyes? Or, you know, what, what would you take from MLS to apply to Europe? What would you take from Europe to apply to MLS? Yeah, I would say, obviously, when I played in Europe, it was under 19 or it was like second or third division. Uh, but at those levels, I could say, like, it's so intense. That was, like, the main thing, like, the trainings. I never played in no, uh, like, official games when I was in Denmark, which is second division. So, but I could say the trainings, they were just, every tackle was hard. Every pass was, like, on the right foot, stuff like that. Not to say in MLS, it's not like that, but I would just say just something about Europe. It's just a little bit more intense. But in MLS, I would say for our players, at least, we have more quality on the ball. That's what I'll say the, the main difference is. Just because, like I said, I play in the lower leagues. But, yeah, I would say that's the main difference. Just the quality in the MLS is better for my team specifically. And in Europe, it's just more like the intensity and, like, running hard type stuff. So, That's really, that's really great insight. Um, all right, um, you are Jamaican and Filipino American, so technically you can play for three national teams. Yeah. Who are you choosing? You get the call from these three teams, these three uh, countries. And, and they're telling me I'm gonna play. Oh. Or I gotta you just, like. You just made a spin to it. One yeah, of them. They... Uh, we'll go one scenario. They're telling you you're gonna play, and then another scenario is like. I mean, if you make it, you make it. We just want you to play for us. 
I mean, yeah, if they say, oh, yeah, you're going to play, then obviously I'm going to choose the U.S. And if one is like, ah, you got to earn it, then I still want to choose the U.S., of course. I just feel more American, you know what I mean? So I think I would choose the U.S. for both. Yeah. But, but to be honest, at the end of the day, whoever wants me to play for them, I'll play for them. It could be the U.S., Jamaica, the Philippines. I'll play for whoever wants me. That's how I see it. All right, scenario. Let me add another scenario. The U.S. doesn't make the World Cup. Like U.S. is not is no World Cup involved. Are you still choosing U.S. over Jamaica? Say Jamaica makes the World Cup or Filipino makes the World Cup. You still choosing U.S. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I choose the U.S. Just because I feel more American. Oh. Yeah, I feel more American. I love that. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got some principles to them. Oh. Yeah. Respect. Okay. Um, you know, before we get into the next segment and I want to ask you, you know, you've had a very, how can I say it? Fruitful career at a very young age. What advice would you have for a young athlete looking to go pro? Especially those, you know, that look like us. Yeah, that's, that's a tough question. Every time somebody asks me that. I would say the best advice that I got personally when, when I was a young kid uh, was from one of my coaches at Galaxy. He would just say, every play matters. So you can apply that to the training. You can apply that to the game. So just treat every play like it's the last and treat every play like it's going to affect the game in a drastic way. So that should really be your mindset. Every day you go into training, every day you go into a game. And then on top of that, just have fun because as you get older, you're going to learn that it's a business and you become a business asset at the end of the day for these clubs. So if you let that take the joy away, then it's like, why are you even playing at the end of the day? So those are the two main things I would say to any, any kid that's really trying to become a professional soccer player. No. That's great advice and make sure if you're listening, you know, that that really does like I've seen people make it or actually, you know, lose an opportunity because of the way they want they warmed up, you know, so mm -hmm. every play matters and, you know, definitely take advice from Zico who's, you know, lived it, who's living it and has done it. Sure. Yeah, for sure. So let's jump into some some fun stuff, you know, you touched on your career and now let's get into you know, like what you like to do off the court or off, not off the court, off the pitch. Um, so we follow you on social media. Um, we see you've been getting into your content bag lately, doing day in the life content, yeah. um, TikToks and stuff like that. So what, what inspired you to start documenting your process? Uh, I just see other people doing it, to be honest. It's not, I'm not the first person to do it. So I just thought, I just like the aesthetics, I guess you say, of the videos. And then after I made a couple it just clicked in my head that this is also documenting my journey. So those are the two main reasons why I started making the videos. So like a couple of years, I could look back and see how my life was. Because like you said, I'm so young and I'm so grateful and so privileged to be in the position that I'm in. So why not document it? Yeah, for sure. And also you've shown up on a few other, you know, stylish players in the league lists. So who are some of your style influences? My brother, my oldest brother, Kanoa. Uh, I think it's just because I grew I grew up uh, living with him, and he would always like mm -hmm. made me take pictures of him with clothes on, um, <laughs> like you know outside for IG, and yeah. Ever since I was young, I wanted to be I wanted to be just like him, like I said. So I really I really try to dress like him. I'm trying to think who else. Travis. Travis Scott, for sure. He's my favorite artist. So I get okay. some inspiration from him. I'll say those are the two main people is uh, Travis and my brother, Kanoa. All right, dope. Who are some of your favorite brands right now? Favorite brands? Uh, here we go right here. Shameless Plug, Mawa. Uh, that's the homie uh, AJ's brand out in LA. What other brands are? I like Bravest Studios. That was one of the varsity jackets I had on. 
And yeah, really, that's I just be seeing whatever I like on Instagram. I just I just buy it. I don't really got specific brands like that, but for sure, the homie AJ's brand is is my favorite. Yeah, definitely shout out the homies. Yeah, um, I've been seeing all right, so lately. they're gonna have to tap in. Yeah, Mawa. Mawa all right, so Studios. like, all right, so when it comes to the locker room, though, who's the best dress? That's a tough one. Um, I would say it's between Harris Madunyanin and and who else I'd give it to. Yeah, I'll give it to Harris because Harris, he, I don't know, he he be in his bag. He be in his bag with his dressing. He got that like European, he got like a European style that's like also like Americanized. Like he know about the drip. Because some European dudes, they be wearing, I don't know what they be wearing, but <laughs> Harris got that, he got that drip for sure. So I'll give it to Harris. Okay. Okay. Dope. Um, so what are some of your off pitch, like hobbies or endeavors? What do you like to do when you're not playing? Uh, I like to play video games. I like to make uh, those vlogs. Like I said, that content. Um, I enjoy cooking a little bit too. And... I be making music sometimes. Those are just yeah. Oh, and I, I just picked up golf too. Okay. I've been trying to learn how to play golf. Oh, golf. Word. Okay. Yeah. yeah ever since uh, the last dance came out, you know Jordan was playing like, like I don't know, it was like thirty two rounds of golf before his games and stuff like that. So I was just like shoot, the goat's doing it. I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> Picking up them power moves yeah. right there. Yeah. So. You mentioned you like to play, um, like to make a little music. Any collaborations with Romain? Nah, nah, nah. He on another level. I, I'm like <laughs> down here. He he up here. So I gotta I gotta work myself up to his level first. But ever since I was okay. young, like uh, in high school, I would make music uh, with my other brother Bryce. And mm. yeah, it's just we just have fun with it. Nothing serious. Just like freestyling and stuff like that. So nothing serious. All right. For sure, for sure. Talk a little bit about the games you playing. Like, what, what system do you have? Like, what games do you play? Yeah, I got a PlayStation. I be playing uh, Fortnite. I be playing Road Company. I be playing FIFA. I just started playing Madden from this past off season. I would play with Ray and uh, Nick Haglin. And mm-hmm. Yeah, Matt, I like Madden, too. Because I just started getting into watching the NFL. Because uh, okay. I've been doing, like, fantasy football. So and the Raiders came to Las Vegas, so I got I got to be into football now. Yeah. So yeah, I just play all the sports games. <laughs> still, play still, Fortnite. Still, still Oakland's team. Uh, nah, nah, they are it's not. <laughs> you know, L's from the Bay, so I'm not sure how he's gonna fly with that. But I'm a Niners fan, though. I don't, I don't care about the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I grew up a Niners fan. Yeah, so. the Raiders fans um, be crazy though. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Talk about you say you do a little cooking as well. Like, what's, what's your best dish? My best dish, I be making some stews sometimes. Uh, I just I'm trying to learn how to cook a good steak because since I just got this new, this new house, uh, Nick Haglin he just gave mm-hmm. me a grill, so I'm trying to learn how to maybe cook a nice steak on the oh. grill. So, yeah. Hold on, real quick. You're not doing no traditional Filipino foods. A little lumpia. Or oh something. yeah, my mom made me. She tried to teach me how to make lumpia like this past winter break, and it's kind of tedious. It's the same as like uh, egg rolls. So yeah, yeah, lumpia is definitely my favorite uh, food though. Favorite Filipino. Yeah, food. growing up in Cali, man. That's if you don't eat nothing else, you eat some lumpia for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Real, real quick, Nick Haglin gave you a grill for yeah, he, like your housewarming gift. Nah, he, uh, cause, all right, so Jeff Cameron gave him a grill and then he gave me his grill. Uh-huh. So, okay, yeah. so it's about passing it down. Yeah, right. passing that's, it that's down. Good. I like that team, that team, team camaraderie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He blessed me. I was about to say, let me buy a house if I'm on Kansas, uh, Cincinnati, but <laughs> even housewarming gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah. And speaking of that, you know, you just, Speaking of that, you just purchased a property. Um, so tell us about that experience, especially you being so young. Tell us about the um, home purchasing experience and also like what your aspirations are for you know further you know property investing. 
Yeah, I can tell you that purchasing a home is a long process. I, I didn't, I didn't think it was gonna be that long. It took like thirty days because they got to do all this title company. You got to send it to the underwriter, all this stuff. So it's a long process. But I purchased a, a duplex, which is like a multifamily house, and I'm thinking of living on one side, renting out the other side, uh, which will lower my my biggest expense, which is my rent every single month. So if I could lower that even five hundred dollars, you know, that's extra money I have at the end of the year. So that's my whole thought process with that. And uh, like I said before, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on social media about it. They call it house hacking. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was really the main reason why I got into it. And like I said before, learning from the older guys, just what other stuff they do um, with their money in terms of their investments. You know, I heard a lot of guys talk about real estate and the stock market. So I got a little bit in the stock market trying to bring something into real estate. So real just like diversify my portfolio. That's what I would say. So. Be smart, yeah, it's real right? smart, especially at your age. It's, it's 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 definitely dope that you're thinking like that. Um, yeah, continue continue with that, man. Stay at it, cause by the time you thirty, I'm thirty seven. By the time you my age, you be be good money. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You got you got more chips in the bank, so that's what I'm trying to do when I'm yeah. in my thirties. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, what are some your, some of your aspirations for life after your playing career? Like when you retire, like what are, what are you thinking about doing? Like what's your your end game, your end goal? Shoot. Someone just asked me that question the other day, too. And I was like, man, my career just started. I'm trying to focus on having a good career first. But yeah, for sure, like I just said, uh, just save up money and get some good investments. So when I do retire and I do have a career change that I won't necessarily be doing it for the money. I'll be doing it as a passion. That's something I want to do. So... Honestly, still thinking about what I want to do when I'm done. Um, for sure, this content creation is is something that I'm definitely interested in now that I'm just doing it, you know, by myself, like just recording myself. And then, mm -hmm. like I said before, when I was living with my brother Kano in LA, we would shoot like little fashion videos. We would shoot uh, just fashion pictures in general. So I kind of got an interest in that, this content creation in general. So we'll see. Like I said, I, I don't really know. I'm trying to focus on having a good career first before I really, you know, take that that mindset uh, of what I'm gonna do after. So Yeah, for sure. Respect, respect. Yeah. Moby, you had anything? No, nah, to be honest, I just think it's amazing what you're doing, you know, thinking, you know, so forward, you know, at a at a young age. And obviously as a soccer player, as an athlete in general, it's tough to think about what's next. When you're, you know, you need to perform and keep the main thing the main thing. But, you know, some of the moves that you're making now, uh, you may not realize it when you're done playing. You're gonna like think back and like, yo, I'm glad I did that right now. So, that's amazing to see, and you know, we're definitely excited to uh, follow your endeavors moving forward. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into a couple of rapid fire questions. Um, All right some little fun stuff here so what is one interesting fact about yourself that most people wouldn't know an interesting fact about myself well i hope i'm an interesting person i can't even think right now uh i would say i mean i've been living away from home since i was 13 i would say that okay all right What's on your pre-match playlist? You, know, you mentioned like Travis. Like who else you got on your playlist? Yeah, I got Travis. I got a little baby in there. Uh, I got some. I got a homie from Las Vegas in there. His name is Sebastian Reynoso. Uh, I got my cousin Noski. He from Florida, Miami area, and mm -hmm. I also got my other homie IV Cortez. He's out in uh, Bullhead City. So those are the those are the main artists I be listening to. Okay, so who controls the ox in the locker room? Uh, Tyler Blackett. He's for he's from England. Okay, what kind of stuff we be playing? UK drills. What kind of mm -hmm. stuff we doing? Nah, he so in preseason, 
he put out like a Spotify playlist and then he just said everyone on the team just add a couple of songs that you like. So we get a little bit of everything. So we got some uh, Latin guys on the team. We got some European guys on the team. Obviously, a lot of Americans. So it's really a mix of everything, really. You got rap. You got reggaeton. You got... I don't even know, some soft stuff sometimes. So it's really a mix of everything. <laughs> dope, dope. What is your favorite off work activity? Like what you like to do? I know you touched on it a little bit um, earlier, but like what you like to do when you don't have on your downtime? On my downtime? Man. Downtime, I like to just chill, to be honest. I be always chilling. I be watching a lot of YouTube. And like I said, I be playing a lot of video games, so. That's really what I do when, when training is over. Just shut up the house, watch YouTube, play video games. And also, too, I like, um, I don't even know what you call it, like personal, what would you say? Like empowering yourself more or learning new things, like I like said. personal development. Yeah, personal development. Like I said, learning like yeah. this whole house hacking thing, learning about real estate, just learning how to better yourself in general. That's something I have interest in as well. So I read up on that a lot. Yeah, super dope. All right. So you you've been you moved around a lot. You've been around. Uh, what's the first thing you do when you move to a new t- a new city or a new team besides find a house? Yeah. Um, first thing I do, I just look for good places to eat. <laughs> yeah. My favorite uh, okay. type of food is ramen. So I usually try to look for a good ramen mm-hmm. place. Okay, have you found one in Cincinnati yet? Yeah, I found a good one. But the best uh, ramen restaurant is Ginya. And I know the closest one on the East Coast to have, I think it's Atlanta. That's the only one I know of on the East Coast. Okay. They don't got one in Cincy, which kind of kind of mad about, but they got one that I do. All right. So what's your favorite away city? So when y'all got an away game, what's the favorite city to visit? Yeah, I feel like this question... I'm kind of handicapped on this question because ever since I've been in the league, it's been COVID. So I can't really experience, mm. you know, you go the day before, stay the night after. So, and I haven't really been on the West Coast either. So I would say New York. I would say New York. I like New York a lot. Okay. All right. Next up. So if you had to build a five side squad, it could be people you know it could be your idols whatever who would be on your five side squad okay i would have my brother kanoa i would have romy uh i would have our other homie elijah martin and so that's i need one more i'm take neymar we ain't gonna have we ain't gonna have no defense but but we're going to have attacking. <laughs> All vibes. We're going to have attacking. So, yeah. You not on the team? Are you coaching? What you doing? Oh, I thought I was automatically on the team. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Bet. Bet. Yeah, I'm gotcha. yeah, I'm automatically on the team. <laughs> bet, bet on yourself. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. All right. What's your, what's your favorite off-season spot? Favorite off-season spot? I would say LA. Yeah, LA for sure. All right. And with you being from Vegas, what's one thing in Vegas that you can do that isn't touristy? That isn't touristy in Vegas. Like, like what, what's one of the best things to do out in Vegas that's not touristy? Mm, I would say a lot of people don't really know, because it's a valley, so it's surrounded by mountains. So mm-hmm. you can really go to, like, Red Rock. You can go to a lot of, like, beautiful places uh, to go hiking in the mountains. I would say that's some... That's not really on the strip or like nightlife. It's more like on some chill, chill type vibes, just like hiking. Okay. I like that. Dope, dope. All right, so let's get into um, one of our favorite segments of the show, Trending Topics. This is a, um, it's about to play a little rapid fire game with it where I'll read off some news headlines and you and Amobi will give your, um, you guys will give your opinion on those headlines using the soccer card system. So, for example, like if you hear a headline and you agree with it or you cool with it, you'll say no card. If it's, if you're indifferent, you can go either way with it, yellow card. And if you disagree with it or you know you're not cool with it, red card. Obviously, 
and then you'll give like a quick explanation of like why you gave it that card. Cool? All right. All right, first up. So Man United is set to hire um, IX coach Eric Ten Hag. So what card are we giving Man United for this hire? You want to go first for Moby? Yeah, yeah, I'll give it a, if it happens, I'll give it a no card. I think Man United, obviously the coach that they have now is that it's actually like a consultant. And obviously with what Tahag has been doing with uh, Ajax, uh, I definitely think he can carry it over. As long as they give him control of the locker room and the ability to make some decisions, I know he's going to kind of probably gut out that roster. Um, I think not to say that they're going to be back immediately, but they'll, they'll show signs of, you know, kind of getting to where they were supposed to or have been, you know, when Sir Alex was involved. Yeah, I would say the same. No card. I think it's great what he's been doing with Ajax, even after, like, the Lick left and the Young left. All the great players left. So, I mean, he must be a good manager. So, I feel like he could bring that same success to the United. All right, next one. Mbappe is rumored to be staying at PSG now. You know, there's been rumors of him signing a pre-contract with um, Real Madrid and all that other stuff. So what card are we giving Mbappe if he stays at PSG? Uh, I'll go first. I say, uh, let me give it a yellow card. Uh, and the only reason why he should stay is if he's trying to get Champions League. Like that, if he like makes a proclamation, like kind of like how LeBron James is like, yo, I'm coming to Cleveland to win a title and then does it with PSG. All right. And I, I see what you're doing. But other than that, and if they're trying to make you like the highest paid player in the world, <laughs> or stay. But, uh, yeah. you know, when, when Real Madrid calls, that's like the one team that you kind of just kind of have to try. You kind of have to taste it. You know, it's like the Yankees. It's like the Lakers. Like, if you were a great player, you had to play for one of those, those clubs. And uh, not to say he won't have the opportunity because he's still like 23, 24, however old he is. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I would give him no say? card. It's because I'm a fan of PSG just because Neymar is uh, my favorite player. So I want to see them still, like, connecting. And then, like Amobi said, um, if he won the Champions League with PSG, I mean, everyone has been counting them out, like, saying they're never going to win a Champions League. And if he does it, it's kind of just cementing his legacy even more. So... And then, like you said, about being, like, the highest-paid player. I mean, he, he getting his bag, and he's young. He can always go to Real Madrid later. So. All right. And so I got one last question for you. You know, you're 21, about to be 22. And you can be you, you can be considered one of the league's, you know, rising stars. So, like, why are you up next? Why are you, like, that next person to, like, help put the league on the map? Why am I the next person? Um... I would say as a right back, I just bring, I bring what you know the new modern fullback is is supposed to be, or what we want, what we want it to be. You know, attacking. Uh, I try to bring flair to the game, honestly, because I used to be an attacker, I used to be a winger. So and Neymar, my my favorite player. So, yeah, I would say that, that that's the main reason uh, I would be considered a rising star. It's just as an attacking uh, outside back. Just getting goals, getting assists, uh, helping the team win, to be honest. Love that. For sure. Well, I know we're All excited right. to follow your endeavors. Uh, what you got? Now nah, I was going to say that's it. Like, yeah, so that's it. Hey, Zico, how can people tap in with you? Um, you know, follow your day in the life, you know, videos or, you know, support what you got going on. Yeah. Yeah, they can just follow me on, on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Zico Bailey. Yeah, for real, just follow the journey. Um, yeah, I'm going to be documenting it, so. No, I'd love yeah, to see it. Doing. And uh, we definitely going to tap in. we got some things in the works. We'd love for you to join up on. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for this week. Make sure you scri- subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC Show. Uh, I'm still getting used to the new taglines, but we got we're building out the culture verse. So we got, you know, two cents. We got a two cents FC show. Make sure you guys support. Check out our merch at two cents sports dot shop. 
and tweet us your comments on the show and any topics you want me or L to discuss. Once again, it's a pleasure. Only place where you're getting unfiltered thoughts and opinions from yours truly. Peace out, sir. Peace.